Jupiter, a planet so massive, it doesn't just dominate our solar system, it defines it. It holds more than twice the mass of all other planets combined. A colossal swirling sphere of gas and storm whose gravity controls dozens of moons and shapes the motion of objects far beyond its reach. From Earth, we see it as a bright, steady light in the night sky. But up close, Jupiter is anything but calm. Its clouds churn with winds faster than any hurricane on Earth. Its storms can rage for centuries. And its sheer size means the physics at play here are extreme. Orbiting this behemoth is a family of moons, at least 95, and counting. Among them are the four Galilean satellites, first seen by Galileo in 1610. Ganymede, Callisto, Europa, and Io. These moons are more than just rocks in orbit. They're worlds in their own right. One has a magnetic field, another hides a global ocean beneath ice, and one is the most volcanically active place in the entire solar system. Since 2016, NASA's Juno spacecraft has been flying in elliptical orbits around Jupiter, diving in close every few weeks, gathering data, and sending back images unlike anything we've seen before. Juno launched from Cape Canaveral in 2011 and took five years to reach its destination. To save fuel, it slingshotted around Earth in 2013, picking up speed for the long journey outward. After traveling 2.8 billion kilometers, it arrived at Jupiter in July 2016 and executed a critical engine burn to enter orbit. Juno's primary mission consisted of 35 polar orbits around Jupiter, which officially concluded in 2021. At that point, NASA approved an extended mission for the spacecraft. This extension added an impressive 42 additional orbits, known as perigoves, to be completed by 2025, bringing the mission total to 77. A periover marks the moment when Juno is at its closest approach to Jupiter. And Apogeove? That's the exact opposite, the point where it's farthest away. Every elliptical orbit that Juno completes includes both, a perigove and an apogeove. But the extension wasn't just about more passes over Jupiter. It opened a door to something new, flybys of the planet's largest moons. And that's where things got even more exciting. Let's begin our journey with Io, Jupiter's third largest moon and easily the most violently active volcanic world in the entire solar system. In the span of 2023 and early 2024, NASA's Juno spacecraft performed a daring series of close flybys, some as near as 1,500 kilometers from Io's rugged surface. These approaches gave us some of the clearest views yet of its northern regions, revealing brand new volcanic features, glowing heat signatures, and even the faint outline of a plume rising along the moon's edge. Its surface is pockmarked with enormous calderas, molten lava lakes, and explosive volcanoes capable of blasting material hundreds of kilometers into space. But this isn't just internal heat at work. Io's fury comes from gravity. Locked in a gravitational tug of war with Jupiter and its fellow moons, Europa and Ganymede, the moon is squeezed and stretched like a rubber ball. This ongoing distortion generates intense friction deep inside, which heats rock into magma and fuels Io's endless eruptions. Using its microwave radiometer, or MWR, Juno peered beneath the crust and discovered something unexpected. Io's terrain, unlike the cratered surfaces of many other moons, appears strangely smooth. This is likely because its surface is constantly being resurfaced by flowing lava, erasing any older impact scars. One particularly striking image came during Juno's 60th orbit, in early April of 2024. From a distance of 16,500 kilometers, it captured the moon's south pole dotted with dark, circular features, believed to be lava-filled pits and calderas. 
JunoCam, the spacecraft's visible light camera, also caught eruptions in action. On October 15, 2023, it photographed a plume emerging from the Prometheus volcano, right along the dividing line between night and day. Prometheus is no stranger to attention. It was seen erupting by Voyager in the 1970s, again by Galileo, and even monitored by the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, Juno has added its own chapter. That early Voyager image in 1979 showed a massive plume rising into space, lava spilling across the surface, and the outline of Prometheus's volcanic caldera. Fast forward to February 3rd, 2024. JunoCam caught a rare double eruption in one frame, taken just 3,800 kilometers above the surface. It's unclear whether this was a single large eruption or two separate events close together, but it's a spectacular sight either way. Juno also targeted Loki Patera, one of Io's most intriguing volcanic depressions, nearly 200 kilometers wide. It's a strange world of glowing magma, ringed by a bright perimeter and scattered with small islands. Its dark, shiny surface behaves almost like a lava mirror, perhaps caused by a thin crust forming and collapsing in slow cycles. Using infrared imaging from the Jovian Infrared Auroral Mapper to study active heat sources on Io. Originally designed by the Italian Space Agency to monitor auroras on Jupiter, Gyram turned out to be a powerful tool for volcanic science. It detected strong infrared emissions radiating from the surface, pinpointing major volcanic hot zones across the moon. One of those was a previously underobserved lava lake named Chors Patera. To visualize the volcanic activity, NASA combined data from two of Juno's flybys, one in 2022 and the other in 2023. They overlaid GRAM's thermal data onto visible light images captured by JunoCam, producing a composite map that highlighted hotspots glowing in red, yellow, and bright white. The left image came from a distance of 80,000 kilometers, the right from just 58,000 kilometers. Even at those ranges, the infrared maps had remarkable clarity, 20 kilometers per pixel in one and just 15 in the other. That means each colored pixel represents a region of volcanic activity larger than a typical city on Earth. And for the first time ever, scientists merged over 30 years of mission data from Voyager, Galileo, and Juno to produce a comprehensive map of EO's thermal hotspots. That map not only confirms the incredible consistency of known eruptions, it also hints at something deeper the possible presence of polar volcanoes. While it doesn't prove the existence of a magma ocean beneath Io's crust, the distribution of these heat sources strongly supports that idea. If such an ocean exists, it could be the engine driving this world's relentless resurfacing. On October 15, 2023, Juno gave us something we've never seen before close-up images of Io's northern polar region. This area had never been fully captured by earlier missions like Voyager or Galileo. But now, Juno was flying just 11,700 kilometers above the surface, finally filling in one of the last missing pieces of the Moon's global map. In the new images, scientists spotted three previously unknown mountains near the Terminator the boundary between day and night. The peaks stood out clearly, bathed in grazing sunlight that cast long shadows across the frozen landscape. Among them was a particularly dramatic structure, a jagged summit shaped like a cathedral spire. They've nicknamed it Steeple Mountain. It rises somewhere between five and seven kilometers above Eo's tortured terrain. These new discoveries remind us that even after decades of exploration, Io still holds surprises. Next, Juno turned its gaze back to Jupiter itself. And what it found was just as dramatic as the moon flybys. Up close, the planet's atmosphere is a chaotic symphony of color and motion. 
Jupiter is a true giant, over 11 times wider than Earth, with enough volume to hold more than a thousand Earths inside. Some of its individual storms are bigger than our entire planet. Its cameras captured mesmerizing scenes of ribbon-like clouds, towering cyclones, and bands that shift from ivory and tan to deep brown and orange. But the real surprises came from the poles. Instead of a single swirling storm at each end, like we see on Earth, Juno discovered entire clusters of massive cyclones arranged in strange geometric patterns. At the North Pole, there are eight, spinning in a tight formation around a central vortex. At the South, there are five, equally massive and just as stable. Despite Jupiter's fast rotation and turbulent winds, these cyclones hold their shape, orbiting each other in a kind of synchronized dance. To understand how deep they go, Juno used its microwave radiometer, the same instrument that scanned Io's interior. By capturing emissions at different frequencies, it could look deeper than visible light allows, all the way down to about 320 kilometers below the cloud tops. Juno's instruments didn't just capture pretty pictures, they revealed how Jupiter's storms change, depending on how we look at them. In one case, scientists analyzed the same group of polar cyclones using three different types of data, visible light, infrared, and microwave emissions. In both the visible and infrared views, the storms appeared clearly, large, circular, and well-defined. But in the microwave image, one of those cyclones practically vanished. Its heat signature was dramatically weaker suggesting that, unlike the others, this storm didn't extend very far below the cloud tops. Meanwhile, other storms that looked similar in visible light showed intense microwave brightness, indicating they reached deep into the atmosphere, with roots stretching over 100 kilometers down. This kind of comparison helped scientists build three-dimensional models of Jupiter's weather systems, revealing how structure, depth, and energy vary from storm to storm. And with every orbit, Juno adds more detail, helping researchers map not just the surface of Jupiter's clouds, but the swirling layers that lie beneath. Some of the most breathtaking imagery came during Juno's 61st to 66th orbits, especially over Jupiter's northern hemisphere. There, the spacecraft captured a chaotic region known as the Folded Filamentary Zone. In this area, Jupiter's usual banded structure begins to unravel. The powerful east-west jet streams, responsible for the planet's striped appearance, start to break down, allowing clouds to swirl freely in complex, evolving patterns. The result? A mesmerizing landscape of spirals, eddies, and whirlpools, like a living painting, reshaped with each passing day. The clouds twist into blues, whites, and ochres, drifting and mixing in ways that seem almost artistic. But beneath that beauty lies valuable data. By studying how these patterns shift, scientists can track atmospheric motion, turbulence, and vertical structure, not just on Jupiter, but potentially on gas giants around other stars as well. On March 7, 2024, during Juno's 59th close approach, the spacecraft delivered a new set of stunning portraits of Jupiter. These images showcased the planet's iconic belts and swirling weather systems, including the legendary Great Red Spot. This colossal storm has been raging for centuries, and it's still larger than Earth. Juno's instruments have revealed that it extends far deeper into the atmosphere than previously believed, anchoring it firmly within Jupiter's turbulent layers. But there was something else in the frame. Look closely. In two of the images, a tiny crimson speck appears near the edge of the planet's curve. That's Amalthea, one of Jupiter's smallest major moons. It's just 84 kilometers wide. Amalthea orbits closer to Jupiter than Io does, completing a full revolution in less than half an Earth day. 
What makes it truly curious is its color. Amalthea is the reddest object in our entire solar system, glowing a deep, rusty hue that scientists believe may come from electrical interactions or internal heating caused by Jupiter's gravity. Even at this scale, Juno continues to surprise, capturing both grand storms and tiny moons with incredible precision. Beyond the storms and moons, Juno has been trying to answer a deeper question, one that goes right to the heart of how our solar system formed. How much water does Jupiter actually contain? By water, scientists mean the basic elements, hydrogen and oxygen, that make up H2O. The presence of water tells us where and how Jupiter might have formed, and whether icy materials from the outer solar system contributed to its early growth. Juno's radiometer has been scanning beneath the clouds, measuring the concentration of hydrogen and oxygen molecules. At Jupiter's equator, the data shows about three to four times the solar abundance of these elements, suggesting that water-rich material helped build the planet. But the puzzle lies deeper down. Near Jupiter's core, the expected concentration of water simply isn't there. If Jupiter had formed by pulling in icy planetesimals, frozen chunks from beyond the frost line, then its interior should be rich in oxygen. But Juno's readings suggest the opposite. This contradiction has thrown planetary formation models into question. Some scientists now believe Jupiter's core might be diluted, or that the water has been redistributed in ways we don't yet understand. With its flybys of Ganymede, Europa, and Io complete, Juno is now entering its final chapter, one that focuses entirely on Jupiter itself. The spacecraft will continue making close passes, gathering data from even tighter orbits, and mapping regions that haven't been seen in detail before. By the end of 2025, Juno will have completed 77 orbits around the gas giant. Its final perijov, orbit number 77, is scheduled for September 17th. That will be its last. After that, Juno's mission will end in a controlled descent. The spacecraft will dive into Jupiter's atmosphere, where it will burn up, destroyed by pressure and heat unlike anything on Earth. Why such a dramatic ending? To protect the moons. If Juno were left drifting, there's a chance it could crash into Europa, Ganymede, or Io, worlds that may one day be explored for signs of life. NASA's planetary protection rules are clear, no contamination. So Juno's final act will be a deliberate fall, a final plunge into the very planet it was sent to study. But its legacy? That's just beginning. Juno has shown us a new side of Jupiter, a dynamic world of volcanoes, magnetic fields, storms, and secrets. It's reminded us that even the oldest planets still hold mysteries, and that sometimes the best way to understand our solar system is to keep asking better questions. From Earth, we'll continue looking up at that steady light in the night sky. But now, thanks to Juno, we'll see it just a little more clearly.